Hello guys, this is Joe Neville and I'm back with another BGP in-depth video. In this one I'm going to be talking about the BGP Next Hop attribute. Now what is Next Hop and why should you care? Well it's a well-known mandatory attribute. Well-known means that all BGP speakers must know it and mandatory means that it must be included in BGP update. So that's when one BGP speaker sends an update listing all of the prefixes that it knows about, it must include the next hop information. The information itself is a router IP address that is used as the next hop to destinations that are listed in the update message. Sounds simple enough, but there's a number of nuances to the way that next hop is applied which complicates this and I'll be going into in this video. In the interest of time, we won't be going into all the different permutations, but the general rule to remember is eBGP peers alter the next hop for prefixes to themselves when they're sending an update. iBGP peers do not change the next hop when they send an update. Here's my network. We're going to be using four VSRs. If you've seen any of my other videos, then you'll be well aware that I'm running the whole thing on my laptop. What we have is two VSRs running in the same AS, running IBGP between them, and I've got OSPF as the IGP. Then we have eBGP sessions out from VSR 101 out to 201, and then another eBGP session out to 301. So 201 and 301 are in different ASs. And I'm going to focus on how this prefix 192.168.99/24, how the next hop of that changes as it is advertised through the network from VSR 301 to 201 to 101 and finally to 102. Firstly, let's have a look at VSR 301's configuration. There you can see I've got the address family, IPv4 unicast, and I've got the network statement. And there is a peer statement over to VSR201. Looking at the BGP table. There you can see our injected prefix, and you can see that the next hop is 192.168.99.254, and that is the interface on this device. So it's using itself as a next hop. That's because it's injecting the network. Now let's look at that prefix on the neighboring device, VSR201. Here's the network, and you can see that it is valid, it is best, it is an eBGP update so we've got an e next to it for external and the next hop has changed so it's changed to 3000.2 if you look over on the diagram 3000.2 is the vsr301 so the next hop has changed from a local ip address on 301 it's changed to an ip address on vsr301 as it was advertised to 201 so let's carry on along the chain and have a look at vsr101 and 102 here we have vsr101 at the top and vsr102 at the bottom let's have a look at vsr101's bgp routing table There's our prefix and the next hop has changed. Just like with the exchange between the VSR301 to VSR201, we can see that the next hop has altered so that it's the advertising VSR's IP address. So 25002, look at the diagram over on the right there, you can see 25002 is an IP address on VSR201. Okay, so that's eBGP and that's meeting the expected behavior. Finally, we look at VSR 102 and we see our prefix, but there's something strange here. We can see that there's an I next to it. It's IBGP, um, but there's no valid and there's no best against it. If you can see there that it's blank. Actually, if you look at the routing table, you can see the extent of the problem here. There's not actually a root in the routing table for this prefix. The reason is that you can have a prefix in your BGP table, but unless it's valid and best, it won't get passed to your routing table. 
So essentially, we have no route to this destination. Now, why is that? Well, if you think back to what I said about EBGP versus IBGP with the next hop, IBGP in general does not change the next hop attribute when it advertises on. According to those rules, VSR101 has advertised this prefix to 102 with the same next hop. If you look here at the top, you've got 25002, so remember that's VSR201's IP address, and we've got the same next hop on 102. That's in accordance with the rules, but it's causing a problem. And why is that? Well, the reason is because we do not have a route on VSR102 to the next hop. And for a route to be valid in the table, to get this asterisk, to make it a valid route, we need to have a route in our routing table to the next hop. So let's just prove that. There, we've got no route to the next hop. Now, obviously, if you think about 101, it's got a route to, to the next hop. There, we've got a direct connection. That's because it has an IP address configured in the same subnet. So it's directly connected to this prefix. Thus, it knows that this interface is the route that it must take to get to that subnet. But VSR102 doesn't have that. It doesn't have a directly connected interface, and it doesn't have any kind of route via its IGP about how to get to this route. How can we solve that then? How can an internal router learn about external next hops? Well, there's two approaches to solving this. One of them is the BGP peer command next hop local. We configure that on our device that's on the edge of the AS and that will rewrite the next hops to point to itself. The other approach is to leak the external subnets into your IGP. That means that your internal device will learn about the external subnets and thus the next hops via the IGP. In my case, it will be learned via OSPF. I'll demonstrate both of those now. Firstly, I'll configure the BGP peer next hop local command. So that will be on the VSL101. It's a peer command that will point to VSR201 and it will essentially rewrite that next hop. So rather than it pointed to this 25002, the BGP update will be sent with an update which is local to VSR101. Thus 102 will know how to get to it, making the route valid. There we are, that's the next hop local command. Let's check on VSR102. And you can see the difference there. So previously we had the next hop of 25002, which we didn't know about. So no star, because we didn't have a route to next hop, so it wasn't valid. Now, as you can see here, the next hop has been changed, and it's been changed to 1.1.1.1. Now that's the router ID of VSR101. VSR102 knows how to get to that address. That's in our routing table already, thus making this prefix valid. We'll just prove that. If I inject the local network into BGP, then VSR301 will get a route back to us, so we'll be able to ping the 192.168.99.254 address. And there we are. So let's take that command off and show you the other approach, which is to leak the external subnets into the IGP. I've taken off that peer next hop local. The prefix has gone back to an invalid state. Tried to do the ping again and it fails. So for the second approach, it's the same principle. The reason why the prefix is not valid is because VSR102 doesn't know how to get to the next hop that's being advertised by 101. So we simply dump that prefix into the IGP so it does have a route to it. As mentioned, I'm running OSPF as the IGP, so what I'll do is I will turn on OSPF on the external interface between 101 and 201. Here's the interface. 
I'll dump it into area zero. As you can see, this second approach solves the problem in a different way. Rather than manipulating the next hop in BGP, we're just giving the internal router a route to the next hop. So as you can see there, I've done a display IP route 25002, and we do have a route to it via uh, OSPF. Let's check the BGP routing table on 102. There you can see now the next hop is the same. We're still pointing out to VSR201's IP address, but we do have a route to it, and that allows the route to be valid. And BGP is passing a route to the routing table. And we can successfully ping. There we are. So that's two different approaches to solving the same problem. And the obvious question is, which one is best? Well, the answer, like usual, is it depends. But in general, it is better to have in your network a clear divide between the internal network and any external network. Injecting or leaking the external link into your IGP means that any flaps, any activity on that link on that subnet will affect your internal network. So if you're running OSPF and the link is bouncing rapidly, that means that you're going to have recalculations, you're going to be having LSAs flooded into your network, and the whole point being that that's essentially beyond your control. That's an external link, which is not internal to your domain. Therefore, in general, the next hop local approach is preferred. I should add a disclaimer here though, that's just a general observation. Your network may be different and so should be evaluated as such. Okay, so that's it for BGP Next Hop. I hope you found that useful and it went some way to explaining some of the nuances around the Next Hop attribute. Please do like, comment and subscribe. Lots more BGP and IP routing videos coming up. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. My name's Joe Neville and goodbye.